Welcome back to episode three of wood bending and how to make a multi-use piece of furniture. So in the last episode, we had a little bit of difficulty with the jig and laminating up the piece. We made a two-part mold, so we couldn't really fit all of the plywood and the jig together. So what we decided to do is take that mold, chop it in half, and that way we just have more flexibility in like bringing it together. All right, here's the jig. So now having a three-part mold, we can bring one part in first and the next part in. It kind of like gives us a bit more play and flexibility. So let's see if it works. Let's laminate it up. Many hours later. <laughs> oh, wow. Pretty slick. So we got it out of the mold, but we got some rough edges, as you can see. So I'm just gonna feed this through the table saw on this side and the edges, clean everything up, and uh, let's see how it looks. So as you can see, it was still very difficult clamping this up. I think the main reason is we don't really have any holes in the jig itself for us to like get clamps in. So we have to use like big pipe clamps and they're all crisscrossing each other and we're dropping parts. So it wasn't the most elegant glue up, I would say. So I think this jig has served its purpose. It's time to move on to a new design, putting our learnings to the test. I think we're gonna design one with a series of holes in here so we can get clamps, small little hand clamps, in wherever we need them. I think it'll be a lot easier to pull it together. So let's get working on that. This is version two of the jig, and this takes into account all of the lessons we learned from uh, the mistakes with the first one. So it's made as a three-part mold as opposed to retroactively cutting it in half. It's more accurate, and I, I knew it was gonna be a three-part mold to begin with. Now I've added all of these holes on, on the sides. What that is for is to allow us to get smaller clamps from here to here, here to here, I made two of these, we've got this one, uh, which is for the small U-shaped piece, and then we've got a slightly larger one, which is for this one. So something else happened. While I was working on another project for a chair that I'm working on, um, I was making some forms for uh, the seat and the backrest. Created these molds, and then I put these into the vacuum bag. And so these don't need another jig for the top and clamps, which is what I'm doing here. I used the vacuum bag, I cut this shape, I just made the bottom mold, slid it into the bag, and then the vacuum bag just sucked down, I left it overnight, and then here we go. Never used a vacuum bag before. Crazy, because I've been doing bent lamination for years. So this was eye-opening and fantastic. Now I'm thinking, what's to say I can't use the vacuum bag to, to create these shapes right here? Now they might be a little bit large, but I think it's worth trying out because I can eliminate this top part of the jig. Whoops. Um, 
And in reality, all I need is this or this. And I put the bendy ply and the veneer over the top, just tape it so it stays in place, slide it into the vacuum bag, and the vacuum bag should suck around it and take, replace the jig at the top. So that's what I'm gonna do today. I'm gonna try it out, um, uh, you know, dry first. I'm not gonna glue up the pieces. I'm just gonna put them in without any glue and see if the vacuum bag is actually able to compress it fully. Um, so my hope is that the vacuum bag will work and you know, these kind of jigs become obsolete and all I need is the base piece to create these shapes. Um, so that's what I'm gonna try now. Okay, uh, let's try with some packing tape. Oh, here's the vacuum bag. Um, when I used this last time, uh, in you know, when I was working on my chair seats, uh, this is the base piece, and it has a series of channels cut into it to allow the air to be sucked evenly throughout the bag. Notice is that it it obviously prevents the bag from extending tall because it's holding it out so wide. So I did a bit of research online, and I've seen people use these vacuum bags without the base in there. What it means is the bag can just kind of contract in on itself a lot more because it doesn't have the structure. But it's my, so my mold right now is like 16 inches tall and it just won't, won't fit in this bag. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna take out this base piece, and then I'm gonna slide in that mold and then we'll suck out all the air and see if this actually works. Uh, it's a long shot, but let's give it a go. So here you can see the bag got sucked into the cavity where there was a gap between the mold and the plywood. I mean, if I could avoid that, it would definitely work. Like it's worked so well in almost every area except, damn it, these gaps. Okay, so a lot of lessons learned this week. I think we made great progress. The vacuum bag was a nice little detour. I've never personally used one before. It's such an amazing tool. Uh, not right for this particular application, but, but cool to try it out nonetheless. I definitely learned a lot about the jig and we're really excited about this new jig with all of the holes. I think it's gonna make it a lot easier to clamp and pull the mold together. So we're gonna get rid of that old mold and try the new jig. So, so uh, very excited about that. The product is coming along really nicely. I'm excited to see the new jig. So definitely check out next week's episode to, to see that. Oh man, these look so, so good with the finish. Also, if you guys are into these types of videos, I'm also working on a dining chair at the moment for our furniture brand Hook, and I'm gonna be doing a series about the design and the fabrication of that, all the way from concept through to finished product. Same as what I'm doing here, 
different type of product, lots of different uh, tools and processes. So, and also, if you're looking for even more Hook content, Hook, our furniture brand, has its own YouTube channel where we focus on different things, some of our marketing campaigns, what's going on in the day-to-day day -day life of the workshop. On the Hook channel, we're doing a lot of YouTube shorts, so if you're more interested in short-form content, that's the channel for you. And I will see you next week. Thanks for watching.